On today's World Insight, Siftys has attracted global leaders in digital services. Among the most notable, Tesla is rising above political tensions and is determined to serve the Chinese market. And robots doing yoga and even cooking. We visit the leaders in robotics that have seized the opportunities from a world gripped by COVID-19. And we check out Japan's NEC to see how they have unrolled tools for smart living. The key factor is the digitalization. Here is our host, Tian Wei. Hello and welcome to World Inside. I'm Tian Wei. Today, let me bring you to the first major international economic and trade event held by China since the COVID-19 outbreak, the 2020 China International Fair for Trading Services. Innovation is in the air if you have the opportunity to visit the event held in the Chinese capital. Both global companies and Chinese local ones are showcasing their latest products and services. Tesla is one of those. Well, it is best known for green energy, electric vehicles, and self-driving cars. Tesla established a huge gigafactory in Shanghai over the past year. Now, it is braving the storm of both politics and pandemic, and is determined to serve the Chinese market. Grace Tao, Tesla's China Global Vice President, told me Tesla Shanghai Gigafactory is churning out Tesla Model 3S and is on course to produce 150,000 cars this year alone for the Chinese market. As you can see, it's very crowded here in the Tesla area. And I'm going to meet my friend Tao Lin here. I met her last time at the, the Shanghai exhibition. Hi, Colin. Hi, Good to see you again. Good to see you again. Yeah, welcome to Tesla. Thank, Thank you so you. much. I remember our last meeting. It was at the end of last year during the right. Shanghai Expo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And right. that was when your global chairwoman was visiting exactly. China. Exactly, yeah. Exactly. And if I remember right, then mm -hmm. um, at that time, the factory is not yet built, finished. Uh, yeah, yeah. We're almost done, yeah, but not yet. Yeah. But look at what you have now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's really amazing. Actually, yeah, this car is come from Shanghai Giga. Oh. It's made in Shanghai, made okay. in China. And uh, not China only this red. one. Yeah, <laughs> we already have many in, in the China world. Uh, yeah, you can see the on the road like Beijing and Shanghai. You can see the China made Model 3 in everywhere. All right. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, how many going to be this year? I know this is going to be difficult you yeah. know, with the pandemic and everything, but how many output this year? Yeah, and uh, we are really happy. We actually already achieved our target. Yeah, which is the I mean the production and the per year will be 150,000. Wow, yeah. that's impressive. Yeah. That would be quite a big proportion of your global output. Exactly. Yeah. Great job. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I'm yeah. sure Mr. Elon Musk will be very happy about the China he, performance. He is. Yeah, he is. Whole generations are right. coming over. You know, right. not only the younger ones, but right. also right. you know grandma and grandma. <laughs> yeah. I think this is actually the big change, and uh, we come from come to China for over I mean over six years, and uh, at the first the beginning, I think only the young people, mm -hmm. and uh, mostly they are I mean doing the technology work, ah. so they really enjoy and like Tesla technology. But today you can see not only the young people and the old generation, like you said before, so the grandma and also even some very very little chi little kids, they really like this product. We were yeah. struggling our way right. getting into right. here right, right. away. Yeah. Yeah. And, and talking about the um, technologies, uh, there are different markets in the innovation. Yeah. So how is Tesla providing you know, your uh, part of the contribution to innovation? Uh, we are, yeah, I think here have the example, so you can see actually this is only, I mean, the small part of the patent uh -huh. we have, and uh, we opened all to the, to the public. So we opened over 400 patents to public, so which means the, all the industry, I mean, if they want to build EVs or they want to build, I mean, like a charger, uh -huh. superchargers, they, they can use our I mean, technology. These are all Tesla own patents. patents. Yeah, and they are open to everyone. Yeah, open to everyone. Including to your Chinese competitors? Ah, including everyone, <laughs> yeah. Well, talking about this, uh, how will Tesla as a new global company you know, try to function in this complexity. 
Um, yeah, I think Tesla actually, yeah, is a new global company. Our Shanghai factory actually is the first overseas factory for Tesla. Yeah, before we only have the factory in the United States, in the Silicon Valley. So uh, I think we are actually yeah, trying to do the very good global company. And for the local market like, like China, uh, our mission is not only to sell our cars or service our customers. We want to do, I think, I mean, actually the full uh, supply chain and all the R&D and the design studio. So we want to have the maybe the Chinese design and the Chinese R&D and the Chinese made cars for China customers. So will the R&D here different from that taking place uh, in Silicon Valley? Uh, I think they will have uh, some difference, but uh, the focus is to, I mean, provide the best product to the local market. Sounds yeah. perfect. Yeah. I know you have a full schedule today. So Thank I you. Thank take up yeah, yeah, your time. Too, yeah. Such a pleasure Thank to see you again. again. Thank yes. you to come Say to hi to Madam Chairwoman for yeah, me. Yeah, I, I will. Thank you so Thank much. You. All Thank the best. You. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah. You're watching World Inside, and coming up on the program today, my encounters with a service robot at the largest trade event held by China this year. And then, next step. Welcome back. I'm Tian Wei. Now let me take you further on the journey to China International Fair for Trade and Services by meeting some of the eye-catching service robots there. Innovation and technologies these days are the tools that we all have in hand to rival the world challenged by pandemic and geopolitics. So now let me introduce over here, Walker. It is a service robot presented by Chinese AI and robotics company UB Tech at the fair. I had some great fun with Walker. The world of robots is always fun. And right now I'm standing here I'm going to meet one service robot whose name is Walker. I heard from colleagues here that Walker can do a lot of things. It can walk, it can water the plant, even doing some yoga. And later I'm going to do some interactions with Walker. Now we are to see Walker waters the plant. Some sprinkles. And now I'm so much looking forward to doing some yoga with Mr. Walker. I hope I could stretch as well as he does. Okay. It looks like Tai Chi rather than yoga. As you can see, the joints are all very good. Wow, more challenging position. Voila, this set of actions looks perfect. <laughs> Walker is telling me everything is fine. I hope so. I want that bottle of soda. So Walker is now going to present that to me and hand it over to me. Let's see how it works. He looks happy. Oh, turning to me now. I can... Okay, this is handed over to me, very safe and sound. Thank you. Now he's going to do some soccer. Look at that. Very good. 
good, Walker. I love it. <laughs> 谢谢，谢谢，谢谢。And to know how it works and why it works. Here's someone we must meet, Michael. Hi, Good to see you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you. Your teams were the ones behind all of this uh, wonderful actions you could perform. Yeah. Tell us more about, you know, what is behind this technology. There are five uh, key intelligence technologies okay. in one robot. The first one you see, when he need to do something, he need to see uh, anything. So. Uh, a, the vision learning is very uh, important to a robot. Yeah. So for for the human being, it's ourselves. The 80 percent of the information uh, we get from the outside world, yeah, from the eyes. So the uh, there's a machine vision for the robot is the key to drive the machine to do everything for us. Okay. The second thing is you you need to. Uh, do something, you need to have the operation system. Right. So we have the ROSA. Uh, there's uh, the first in, uh, ROSA system for the robot to drive the robot to do everything. Mm. And also coordinate with all the, uh, the content connected with the outside world. Yeah. So mm -hmm. if he, he can read the uh, novel to you, oh. he can accompany you to see the TV. Yeah. So when you discuss the like a football match, so all the information is seen from the screen. He can input through the operation system, right. and there's more, one more impo important. He need to interact it with you. Yes. So the voice recognition is very important. So there is a lot of algorithm involved, whether yeah. it's vision or positioning, right, yeah. and also allocation, yeah. and also need to have a operating system that brings everything together. Yeah. I see. So, so uh, what about the performance he just did? Are you giving him uh, 100 points or 80 points? Uh, it's my baby, so I give you 100 points. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you'll say that. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not the only one, right, you yeah. are working on? Yes, one but more. But also one more. OK, yeah. tell us more about this. <laughs> OK, there's one more baby. So <laughs> it's for the global pa uh, pandemic. Okay. It's called Cruiser. Yes. It's Cruiser. He can help you to detect your temperatures. All right. And also, so he reminds you. 36.2 or 33.4 Celsius. And it is advising me here in red that I should wear the face mask, the face which I didn't do because for the interview. But anyway, yeah. fun. Okay. So this is especially for the solution to the global uh, pandemic. Right. So prevents the all the disease the infections. He has the interactions mode. I see. So after he detects you, if you the temperature is higher, and then he has the alarm to the doctor. Okay. The doctor can via there's a camera here. He can through the video conference to talk to you. Okay. Wow. So there's a whole series of services. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Provide. There's a total solution wow. to so checking can you the. you see that not only here in China, Michael yeah. told you me or, or earlier yeah. that actually it's been used in hospitals in, in South Korea, Korea. Yeah. okay, in Japan, in Japan. Uh, also in Belgium I and also in Austria. Know. We uh, adapt this robot mm -hmm. into different mm -hmm. the hospitals mm -hmm. and also the communities as well to help to prevent the uh, coronavirus. Mm -hmm. Talking about this, you know, Michael, there has been a lot of discussions about, you know, where robots are going. As a developer of robots, what do you make of the current reality? Uh, the first thing is we need to focus and invest quite a lot in the core uh, AI technologies. So there's a very long term investment. So we don't see it's a very short term. So for long term one, uh, we have the vision that to bring the robot into the every family. For that goal, we need to invest quite a lot, like the algorithm, mm -hmm. difference, like the machine learning, yeah. also the big data, and also the nice um, uh, movement co controls. This is the core investment uh, aspect for a robot industry. Okay. So this, for long term one, we have cooperated difference. Uh, research lab. Uh, we de develop in Beijing, develop in Wuhan, develop in uh, our Shenzhen headquarters. So this is what we do by ourselves. Mm -hmm. 
But globally, we hope that we're still looking forward to a global cooperation in a very high levels of the AI industries. That would be very uh, good and benefit for that mutual benefits for the global societies. You know, Michael, I love what you just said, but I also love Walker. Oh, I yeah, just wonder I when can I take Walker back home? <laughs> um, like really, really functioning. There's uh, we still at a stage of the early, very early stage of AI and uh, service robot. So we are looking forward uh, in two goals. One goal is maybe uh, in ten or two, uh, in ten or twenty years, maybe we can uh, uh, make the goal and let every family have your robot to service at you. Yeah. <laughs> the second goal is that we need to. Uh, set a very uh, compatible price for every family, like a second class car. Mm -hmm. The price is equal to that. That's about uh, uh, 30,000 US. 30,000 yeah. So that, so then you can, can affordable, yeah. afford right. to, uh, in every single family, you can afford one service robot in your family. After bidding farewell to Walker, the service robot, and Michael Tan from UbiTech, I rushed to another service robot whose name is I Love You. Well, quite an interesting name, isn't it? It promises to be able to make thousands of dishes, including complicated yet fascinating Chinese food. I tried to figure out whether that is true or not by testing at least one dish. Chinese cooking, one of the most complicated and yet fascinating cooking styles in the world. I know now a robot in this exhibition that could actually cook hundreds of dishes and see all of this on the table are the products of this robot whom I'm going to introduce to you. First of all, let's meet Simon, who is uh, here to help us to understand how this robot works. My what pleasure. is the name of this robot? Uh, easy to remember, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, right? I, I, if you can cook the food really well, there may, must be a lot of love in it. That's his duty. <laughs> yes, indeed. So, how does it work and what are we going to see? Uh, actually, we already put in uh, we, uh, more than 3,000 recipes inside. So, you, you just choose your dish and uh, put the button for the instruction. Piece of cake. Wow, that's really impressive. So let's try one dish today. Can we do that? Well, of course. Okay. Like, uh, so we're going to choose uh, one of the most famous Chinese uh, dish, uh, sugar and the south coated spare rib. Okay. okay, spare rib. Yeah, spare rib. Let's start. Follow instruction. Start cooking. We're putting the oil. Putting oh. oil, 10 oh. gram oil. 10 gram oil. And then, next step. Oh, so it's just that easy, just go next step. Yeah, okay. just follow the instruction. It says ginger. Ginger, ginger. yeah, ginger. Okay. Ginger. Ginger, okay. Next step. Next step. Put on the cover. And it shows put the covers up. Yeah. Start cooking. And now we start cooking. Yeah. And we set the temperatures here, right? With, with, uh, this is timing. Uh, yeah. 90 seconds. And, and these are the temperatures, right? Yeah, this is the temperature. Okay. Yeah. So we still have uh, one minute. One to minute, go. yeah. During this process, you might want to explain to us mm -hmm. how will later it works. So these are all the ingredients it's we all have. All the ingredients. It might we be. have the. We have the uh, soy sour sauce. sauce. Soy sauce. This is the light color soy sauce. Okay, different color soy sauce. Yeah, this is a uh, vinegar. Vinegar. Yeah, this is a uh, cooking wine. Oh, cooking wine, Chinese yeah. cooking wine. Yeah, Chinese cooking wine. This is the sugar. And we have sugar here. Yeah, we have, of course, the spare ribs. Most important, yeah. the raw material. The raw the spare material. Ribs. Ribs. Okay. This is actually my favorite dish. Oh, <laughs> you can try in uh, about 15 minutes. Okay, I'm looking forward to it. And we still have uh, 20 seconds to go. Mm. So, have you ever tasted all these dishes on the table? Yeah, I did. I did. Really? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Which is your favorite? Uh, actually, uh, the shrimp is my favorite. <laughs> How to cook the shrimp? Just follow. Just, Just follow, follow instructions. Yeah, <laughs> choose the master recipe and push the button. 
Everything so easy. Easy. Yes. Okay. Okay, next step. And then we say next step, okay? Spare rib. And now spare rib, yeah. okay? Okay. Then next step. Yeah. We see the sugar. Sugar. 50 grams. Okay, 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 okay. Not too ah, much. Okay. One could tell Simon doesn't cook much at all. <laughs> That's why I can buy it for my... For your family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vinegar. So it actually shows how yeah. much? Yeah. 50. Okay, okay. Oh, okay. Wow, perfect. Exactly. Okay. So it says how many grams there is yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And then the soy sauce. The soy sauce. Be careful. We don't want yeah. too much soy sauce, okay? 15. 15, 15 grams, grams soy sauce. I'll watch it out for you. Okay. Mm. Wow, a little bit more. Too oh. much. 20. We got 20 grams. It, it asked for 15 grams. 18. So, 18, 18. So we'll see how Simon eventually is <laughs> going to finish the dish. Okay. okay. Now this darker color soy sauce. Ah, good. good. Perfect. 10 grams. And then we go to the next step. Okay. Put the cover on. Cover it up. Okay. So now we see the blinking of uh, the small robot. We have to wait uh, 15 minutes, minutes, 25 minutes, 25 minutes, and then we're going to see the final dish. Yeah. Thank you so much, Simon. I'm looking forward. <laughs> Thank you. And you're watching World Inside. Coming up, my exclusive interview with the executive of NEC, one of the earliest Japanese global companies present in China. We so touch on how innovation brings back For life. the uh, global economy enhancement. Welcome back. This is World Inside. I'm Tianwei. Nippon Electric Company, or NEC, is one of the premier international companies taking part in CIFTIS 2020, where they bring innovations for smart living. The world we are living in now is embracing digitization. NEC as a multinational company believes decoupling is definitely not the option. I speak to NEC chief representative of China, Takashi Tsukamoto. I'm excited that you're going to share your history with us. Thank you very much. It's a, a very big pleasure for yes. me. Yes. Uh, we NEC Corporation it was established in uh, 1899. Mm -hmm. It means uh, uh, last year of the 19th century. It means that uh, we survived uh, across the three centuries. Congratulations. Thank How you very much. How many years you have been working for the company? Uh, three, uh, 33 years, yes, <laughs> My, as usual in, in Japanese. Okay. <laughs> and your relation with China? Yes, uh, we started the relationship in 1972. Mm. Uh, we have set up the uh, satellite air station and then the, to the live streaming uh, from China to Japan, the Sheikh Hanging, the uh, Prime Minister, both Prime Ministers. That's very impressive, isn't it? 1972, the normalization, China-Japan relations, and NEC play a critical role because you have this satellite here established and set up right at the airport. Correct. Yeah, it is uh, one of the biggest proud in our company. Yes. Mm. Later you have, of course, a lot of subsidiaries and JVs in China. Yes, uh, as you may see, the 1990s we had set up the self joint venture company for the semiconductors in Beijing, uh, telecommunication in Wuhan, the semiconductors in Shanghai. Yes. I see. And the list goes on. <laughs> Thank you very much. And 2003, that's impressive. You have this China Research Lab. Correct. Institute. Yes. 
Yeah, yes. And, uh, you know, at this moment, uh, around 60 engineers work for this laboratory and mm -hmm. try to set up the new ideas. And where are they now? Ah, I know, in the same building, this same building. building. Yes. Do you visit the institute often? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh, one of the, my uh, concerns is... One of your biggest uh, areas of... Uh, Correct, correct, uh -huh. yes, and uh, the new, by new idea, yeah, new contribution. So you give them a lot of pressure. What about new idea today? What about new ideas tomorrow? Why not? <laughs> <laughs> that's what makes a boss, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> and then when did you come to China? Uh, I came here in 2018, yeah. uh, around 2.5 years ago. So it's ago. almost like uh, yes, here, yes, yes, right? Yes. So uh -huh. we, I'd like to extend, uh, expand uh, yeah. my history. Yeah. Yes. Innovation and technological advancement have been a discussion and also area of cooperation between China and Japan. How do you see that is being reflected this year at the International Fair for Trading Services? I also attended the fair last Friday. Mm -hmm. and, then the, and then the, I recognize the uh, message from the uh, President Xi Jinping's addresses, mainly uh, three. Uh, one is uh, uh, recovery from COVID-19. Mm. Yes. Uh, secondly, the open market for mutual benefit. Mm. Yeah. Number three, digitalization. Yes. Uh, the key factor is the digitalization. Yes. The, through the digitalization, the uh, global market shall be opened. So even the ma, some country uh, try not to be open the market yeah, through the digitalization. Uh, it is inevitable or to open the market close the border. And then the, this fair may accelerate this tendency. Mm -hmm. That is my opinion. Mm. So how should we understand the talks, at least, of so-called decoupling, technological-wise? And what does that mean for your company, particularly you are having a global operation with a big presence in China? We cannot expect the actual decoupling. Uh, because again, the digitalization uh, accelerates the post-COVID-19 world. Mm. So you don't think that is going to be the trend, the so-called decoupling? I don't think so. You have a lot of staff here in China. This operation is extremely important for your global map here. Uh, so tell me more about how exactly in the digital world you are working with China. Uh, it is true that uh, in China, uh, digital giants such as uh, Alibaba or Tencent is there. So uh, I don't think uh, uh, we can complete, uh, compete with them. And then the, we, uh, we cannot contribute to all the segments in the society. So at this moment, uh, we try to concentrate uh, uh, one segment, specific segment, uh, health care and elderly care. Mm -hmm. Because the, uh, in Japan, uh, around uh, 30 years back, uh, elderly society is already there and then that we have been struggling. So in that sense, uh, uh, we have uh, some room uh, to contribute to uh, improve those uh, issues, even in China. Mm. In what way, what do you think are the most urgent topics that you're working with China on ah. regarding the older population? Okay, one keyword is uh, personalization. Mm -hmm. The service uh, provided to uh, elderly person in China is not uh, uh, personalized. So uh, we can contribute to provide a more personalized and a better service to the elderly person. For example, my mom, what kind of a personalized service hmm. would she get as a result of NEC's working together with the Chinese side? Currently, uh, uh, okay, the uh, senior elderly person who enter into the elderly uh, center itself, the most case, unfortunately, they cannot go back to their home. Mm. Uh, but uh, uh, that is, uh, uh, I don't think, the uh, proper way. Uh, we uh, try to uh, analyze the data and then the provide uh, not only the care service but also for the rehabilitation program. Mm. So by uh, getting those rehabilitation program, uh, those elderly person uh, can go back to their home uh, and then the, uh, can do the remaining life. 
that it is, you know, of course, uh, happy for the family, but also uh, the, it uh, helps the, uh, uh, reduce the cost, mm. means that uh, reduce the financial issues in the government. Well, we can say that uh, this issue is the uh, governmental, one of the most important, uh, most severe uh, governmental pro uh, issues. What does the rehabilitation program include in terms of services? We can provide uh, uh, some devices. The, uh, one of the devices can uh, see the status of the uh, capability for walking. Yeah. Mm. So it would, the sensors, once they enter the rehabilitation program, uh -huh. they will be equipped with different kinds of devices and sensors. Correct. It depends upon the status of the individual elderly person. I see. And then data will be collected about them, even though they are staying at home. Correct. And your control center will notice all the data and analyze it if there is anything that it is abnormal in a way. Correct they would provide services accordingly? Through the care center or the care manager or care staff itself. Mm. This is going to be an enormous important project, I think. Yeah. For the elderly. Huh? I believe so. Frankly speaking, we cannot provide the service all over in, and even in Japan. Mm. So uh, we have a specific uh, uh, area uh, to provide our services. So uh, even in China, well, of course, uh, China is uh, much bigger than in Japan. So uh, we try to focus on the uh, area, uh, including the uh, Shandong province or mm. Beijing or uh, near Shanghai area. Mm. Uh, we do not have any idea to uh, provide the services all over China at uh, for a while. Then it comes to a question of global supply chain. As a global Japanese company, you have factories, service centers, R&Ds everywhere in the world. How do you see the debate about this? I think uh, uh, global supply chain uh, can, um, it may be split into two. Yes. You think there is a danger? Yes. Uh, of course, the, uh, the um, wage of the uh, uh, laborers in China of course, already <laughs> become higher than yes. the surrounding world. So, uh, so-called uh, labor, in, uh, labor, labor intensive uh, economy, industry, well, well, shall be shifted uh, surrounding China, such as uh, ASEAN or Bangladesh or uh, India, Pakistan. Is it happening to NEC? Yes. But uh, no, not totally, mm. yes, but no, time to time, yes. But you know, due to the uh, uh, economic growth in China, but, uh, this, is, can, uh, this cannot be inevitable. On the other hand, the uh, supply chain for the new economy, mm -hmm. uh, whether uh, innovation, uh, shall be uh, initiated and, uh, uh, by China. Yeah, because uh, uh, most of the uh, innovation at this moment uh, have been established in China. Then there are uh, there's, uh, two factors. Yes. One is a uh, uh, huge market. Right. Yes. By digitalization. Yes. Huge market meaning huge data too. Correct. And then the second one is uh, initiative from the Chinese government. Mm. Yes. Uh, Chinese government, uh, even compared with the surrounding uh, government, uh, including Japan, uh, uh, let the innovators uh, uh, to do the uh, proof of concept testing yeah, freely in certain period without any restriction. So, uh, so called uh, we can say uh, uh, kind of the sandbox. Mm. And then the Chinese government has been done those manners for uh, already done uh, for the uh, certain years. Mm. So uh, most of the new economy or new innovation, new industry has been established in China mm -hmm. in this market. Is there a danger for NEC to have two different innovation or technological research, uh, shall I say, circles? Hmm. One is in China and China only. The other is for maybe 
U.S. Uh, and uh, U.S. allies and uh, you know Japan included. How does NEC as a global company see this? You know, putting all the pieces together. Okay. Uh, so uh, one point is the uh, Asian market, market in Asia, uh, first uh, you know initiated in China, is so huge. So uh, we have not con uh, recognized China as the uh, global uh, manufacturing plant, but the uh, global market biggest market. We cannot uh, rely on the uh, uh, one part of the world. Mm. Of course, it uh, might be true that uh, uh, Japan and the United States has a uh, strong relationship. But uh, uh, as you mentioned, uh, you know, economic po economical point of view, uh, we have been more closely related with the Asian countries. Mm. NEC established your office in China decades ago. At the very beginning of China's reform and opening up, Japanese companies contributed greatly to China's open up Thank and you. the technological progress and the people opening their eyes to the rest of the world. I remember very clearly then the Vice Premier uh, Deng Xiaoping went on a trip in Japan and on the bullet train and he was so excited. So we can see there is a huge link between China and Japan in terms of opening our eyes, try to show each other the best. So where are we going from here? Things are complicated once again, mm -hmm. much more complicated probably than 20 years ago, let's just put it that way. So from your perspective, how can we do it? Japan already became around uh, six or 70 years old. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, so we are in the matured society. So uh, we cannot compare in the uh, quantitatively. So uh, we can see the difference of the quality of the society. Mm. Uh, so uh, it is true that uh, uh, we Japanese now even struggling how to uh, nicely matured. Uh, so those experience are uh, surely uh, uh, China uh, in you know, some decades. Uh, may become the same status with a bigger scale. Mm. Of course, we are ready to uh, provide uh, our experience, uh, good, not only the good experience, but also the, even the uh, severe experience. But that is the role of the uh, so-called matured society country. Yeah. So, uh, so I'd like to ask to Chinese people uh, to see uh, on those point of view uh, how you know, nicely Japan society matured. Mm. Uh, China can see and uh, study uh, what may be happening at what should, do, should we do to be the uh, beautiful matured society. I love that idea. The, uh, our focus area, the elderly society, uh, elderly care services, mm. is uh, uh, in accordance with those understanding. What a pleasure talking to you. Takashi Tsukamoto from NEC. And that's all the time we have for today. If you'd like to see more, you can search our program World Insight or check out our YouTube channel. Follow us on Twitter and Facebook. I'm Tian Wei. On behalf of the team, thanks for watching. Bye for now.